Good evening, everybody. Uh, most of you are here for the um, mural painting celebration, but there's a couple people here for individual proclamations, so we're going to get them done first and let them be on their way, especially since I think Chuck has what, soccer duty or baseball duty? Back du to school night. Back, Back to school night. All right, that's important. So let me start by reading a proclamation uh, to the Janice Lopez Ovarian Cancer Foundation, Turn the Town Teal, part of the Ovarian Cancer Awareness Campaign 2017. Whereas ovarian cancer is the fourth leading cause of cancer death among women in the U.S., with nearly 22,000 women diagnosed with ovarian cancer each year, approximately 13, that doesn't make sense. I'll skip that one. Whereas the Janice Lopez Ovarian Cancer Foundation spotlights efforts to raise funds and awareness for ovarian cancer patients, survivors, and families, and represents the hope that those lost to ovarian cancer will never be forgotten, that those who face ovarian cancer will be supported, and that one day ovarian cancer will be eliminated. Whereas the National 2017 Get the Facts, Recognize the Signs Public Awareness campaign is supported by the Janice Lopez Ovarian Cancer Foundation and stands as a premier event by which ovarian cancer awareness organizations accomplish their mission to honor ovarian cancer survivors, educate the general public about the importance of early detection and prevention of ovarian cancer, and raise funds in the fight against ovarian cancer. And whereas the Township of Woodbridge supports the foundation in their ongoing campaign to support research, education, and awareness, and announced the Teal Night for Life fundraising event on Saturday, October 7, 2017. Now, there I, Jeff, therefore, I, Johnny McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge, in concert with the Woodbridge Township Council, do hereby recognize the Janice Lopez Ovarian Cancer Foundation and Chuck Lopez, founder, and announce the 2017 Turn the Town Teal campaign in support of ovarian cancer awareness and do urge all Woodbridge Township residents to join in the efforts to eliminate ovarian cancer. So a few years ago, Chuck lost his mom, his dad lost his wife uh, to ovarian cancer. I'll tell you, so many times something happens tragic and people right away organize. They right away do something. But then after a year or after two years, it fades away. Very rarely does an, an, an organization start something and commit to it and stick with it and I don't know how many years this is. Uh, Twelve, years. Twelve years later. Twelve years later, it's still going strong. They have to paint the town teal. We have the ribbons everywhere. I just think it's admirable that this family has not just had a one-year and out, two-year and out effort. It's ongoing. There's a foundation. It's supportive of you. You've heard the research, the education. I think that's great. We're happy to participate. There is an event on October 7th. I think as many of us are going to go as we can. Uh, October Saturdays are crazy in Woodbridge Township government, and so are September Saturdays. So are most Saturdays. Uh, but we're going to make every effort to attend, and we want to give Chuck and his dad a chance to come up, accept this proclamation, and give them an opportunity to talk about the event. <laughs> What's your name? There's a gift. Gil. Gil. Yeah. Gil Lopez. I, yes. I yes. knew that. Once yes. you said Gil, I knew that, but I didn't know until you told me. So anyway, I'll present you with this and let Beth take a picture and then we'll give you a chance at the microphone to uh, talk about it. Come on over here. Get closer there. We can all get in. Okay, the microphone is all yours. Go take all right. Thank you. Just take a moment. Sure. I like seeing all these kids here. I'm a school teacher, so go home and do your homework when you're done with this. Uh, bear with me, I have what I call the September flu. It's the, uh, the cold that comes every year. But thank you again, uh, Mayor McCormick. My dad and I were just talking. Uh, the last time we were here, we received a proclamation um, was um, in 2009. It was a Tuesday night, just like this. Um, and uh, my mom, uh, just passed uh, four or five days after that. It was, it was, it was just before she had passed away. Um, and like the mayor said, we've been working at this for, for quite some time now and raising money for ovarian cancer awareness. It's something that's very important to us that we're going to keep doing. Um, and the partnership with Woodbridge is great. We really enjoy turning the, the, um, the complex here, Teal, but if there's some volunteers out there in Woodbridge that would love to join us next year, uh, we'd love to Teal the whole downtown of, uh, of Woodbridge and Main Street. It'd be fantastic. So you can find out more information and contact us at jlocf.org. Um, just to do a, a little plug for our event, um, Saturday night, uh, October 7th, uh, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, we're featuring our Teal Night for Life which um, everybody asks me what it is, and it's really just a giant celebration of life. Um, it's a huge party, so it's a great excuse to get a babysitter and come out uh, if you enjoy um, food 
and um, a few drinks and, and live music. It, this is an event for you, and I know Woodbridge loves the live music with the summer concert series, so hopefully uh, some of the, the council and the mayor can make it. Um, it's from 4 to 9 uh, in Woodbridge. We have uh, in New Brunswick. Um, we have some fantastic sponsors this year. Uh, the Olive Branch Bar and Restaurant is producing the event for us. Uh, Miller's Party Rentals uh, is, is another large sponsor. Um, Chris Palladino and Devco, the New Brunswick Development Corporation, uh, and, and there's just a, a ton of sponsors, along with JFK Medical Center, have really stepped up to help to make this an amazing event. Um, we, we try a, a little bit more every year, um, but the best part about this event, and I'm a music teacher, an elementary school band teacher, so we always do something with music. My mom loved music, and this is a, if you've never seen a dueling piano show, it's just a giant party. Um, these guys are called uh, the Flying Ivories. They perform all over the New York metro area. They play everything from Aretha Franklin to Metallica, from Jimmy Buffett to uh, Sinatra, I guess. Uh, the, they definitely do Springsteen. I was, they definitely do Springsteen, so that's why hopefully he'll be there. And I gotta say, I appreciate the color. Yeah, I like the closest I could get. I yeah. like the color. No, yeah. this is good. I, I own quite a few shades of teal. Um, but um, thank you again for the the recognition. Uh, my my dad does the the lion's share of the work for the foundation. Uh, he's the one that really. Uh, kicked it off and founded it and, and did all the paperwork because Lord knows my brothers and I would not have been able to get through all that. But uh, I want to thank him for everything he does to keep it rolling um, and, and all the people that support it. So if you can make it out, um, you can find out more information at jlocf.org. Uh, you can buy tickets there. Uh, if you can't make it, if you want to make a donation to, to help in the fight against ovarian cancer, please do. And, uh, it's thank on you. our website and our, my mayor's Facebook page. Excellent. On the mayor's Facebook page. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank Let you very much. Let me ask you all this. Is, I've seen a dueling piano sting where you pay somebody to play a song. Song. So they start to play it, and then someone else says, "I don't like that song." They pay more, and they stop. Uh, so it's pretty funny. Well, this is—I've right? seen one of these before, and these guys are fantastic. It's kind of a healthy combination of comedy, music, and just. Uh Bombast acting, it's bombastic. Silly. The the Flying Ivories are donating all their tips raised back to the foundation. Um, uh, the it's a cash bar that night. I will tell you the caveat. But I found out um, the the Olive Branch Bar and Restaurant is donating all bar proceeds back to the foundation. Um, all the bar proceeds are going to be matched by. Um, uh, Tito's Vodka as well is matching all the bar proceeds. So there's a lot of great sponsors that have come out. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Rutgers Police Department is helping us out, and uh, a lot of folks are coming to help. So it's oh, going to be it's going to be great. Do, we'll do. Thanks so much. All okay, right. you got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, this is Mesothelioma Awareness Day. Uh, let me read this proclamation. Whereas mesothelioma is an aggressive asbestos-related cancer that affects the linings of the lungs, abdomen, and heart. And whereas the heavy use of asbestos in manufacturing, industry, and construction has been recognized as an occupational health disaster, and research has shown that a high percentage of all mesothelioma victims were exposed to asbestos on naval ships and shipyards and at chemical manufacturing facilities. And whereas in 1999, the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation was formed to eradicate the life-ending effects of mesothelioma and to further awareness and progress in developing effective treatments for the disease. And whereas Alfred Oroskovich, the longtime resident of the Avenel section of Woodbridge, was employed as a pipe fitter welder shop mechanic his entire life and was diagnosed with mesothelioma in September 2014 and subsequently passed away from the disease three months later at the age of 84. And whereas the establishment of Mesothelioma Awareness Day raises public awareness of the disease and the need to develop effective treatments. Now, therefore, I, John E. McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge, in concert with the Woodbridge Township Council, do hereby recognize Tuesday, September 26, 2017, to be Mesothelioma Awareness Day throughout Woodbridge Township, and to further dedicate Mesothelioma Awareness Day in honor and memory of Alfred Oroskovich. Would you please say, accept this proclamation first? And then I'm going to ask you to say a few words. Got it? Okay. Would you please say a few words about what you know about the disease and how people can be more aware of it? So the thing is, is that um, before my father got it, it was just an annoying television commercial until it entered our house. And um, I learned real fast how terrible it is. And I, I had no idea that asbestos um, is so deadly and that it's found in everything. It's, it's in uh, sheetrock, it's in the tiling, it's in uh, everything you could think of, concrete. Um, and the other thing is that when my father was being treated at UPenn, 
our, our meso um, doctors said how, you know, years from now, the 9-11 people, um, this would be their diagnosis because when the trade centers were built, um, even though they tried to get the asbestos out, it's still in the concrete, it's very much in there. So um, I, I like what the Lopez family is doing with their foundation and, you know, raising money. And this is all very raw and very new for me. So um, I'm hoping that in the years to come, I could help uh, awareness, get walks together, get people incorporated. But if you don't have uh, people to walk, there's, uh, there's no money to be raised. So um, I'm, this, is, this is the beginning of a, of a forever for me to help make people more aware of what a terrible cancer it is. And I want to thank you for the proclamation. Well, I think on behalf of the town council, I think we hope you have the same success as the Lopez's. So 12 years from now, you're sitting up here. I hope with so a too. Very, very successful that's, foundation. That's my goal in hand. So I know my dad um, would be real, real surprised. So I want to thank you. Certainly. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let me introduce the council members who are here. To, all the way down at the end is Kyle Anderson, Councilman at Large. To his left is Councilman Greg Ficarra, Councilman at Large. To his left is Nancy Drum, First Ward Councilwoman, covering Woodbridge proper and Sea Warren. And to her left is Corey Spiller. Oh, I'm guessing most of you here would be your councilman covering Avenel and Poor Redding, since all the kids here are mostly from school four and five, and painted the Avenel mural. That's probably you're probably his constituents, so. Let me start by, let me describe the project a little bit. So um, the Avenel uh, General Dynamics site is being converted into a luxury apartment complex. Uh, the center pin of that is going to be a 200-seat theater. It is currently in the final design. It will be starting to go out to bid very soon, and hopefully by next fall uh, the center is built. So everything is going to have an arch theme. We want the people that live there to be arts oriented. There's going to be some retail space. We want that to be arts oriented. We thought that was the way to sell the downtown project as being an arts village. It's a, it's a magnet. It's what's going to drive people to the center, um, especially the theater. So we had the idea to turn the three walls. The fourth wall we can't do because it's not a concrete. It's up a hill to Abbey Lumber. But we had the idea to paint murals on the three walls. So two years ago, we painted an ocean, we, I didn't say we, um, the experts, the um, teachers and the students painted an ocean scene, and that was kind of in deference to what was on the wall years and years ago, there were whales uh, painted by a local Woodbridge resident. So we thought that the ocean scene would be the first uh, piece of it, and then a year later across the street we did a farm scene, and now the third piece of it that was just done this summer was a zoo scene. So everything's there. It's, I think it's very exciting. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think the artwork is tremendous. I think everybody who worked on that should be proud. Um, I'm proud of it. I love it. Um, it's, it's to the point where for the last two years as we would drive by, me and my chief of staff who runs the project as the head of our redevelopment agency for the, for the 500 apartments in the theater, we drive past it and she'd say, oh, look, another building started. And I'd say, oh, look, the zebra's up. You know, all I cared about was the mural because I just think that really it does something to downtown Avenel. I think this whole project is going to change Avenel tremendously. I think it already has. Um, I have talked to a lot of realtors. Uh, they basically say that in the town, prices over the last year for houses have gone up about 2%, but prices in Avenel have gone up about 4%. That's as close as you're going to get uh, to understanding what we've been saying all along about that site. There's nothing good about li living next to a chemical factory that's been abandoned for 30 years. Nothing good. Um, it, it's, it's about property values, and we can see already that the project is working. I think downtown Avenel Street's going to have a makeover. I think especially Rahway Avenue is going to have a makeover. Uh, there's a lot of things on Rahway Avenue where I'd rather wouldn't be there. A lot of old abandoned buildings, and I think that's going to be the next place to get some attention. So we're working on all that very vehemently. Corey Spiller, I think, uh, if we made a list of all the projects we have in town, there's five wards. I would bet the third ward, Avenel, has 50% of them between Rahway Avenue, Avenel, General Dynamics, and Route 1. It seems like half of our attention is on those, those areas right there in downtown Avenel. Uh, so we're, we're working very, very hard on that, and so is Corey. So, Corey, if you could come up and help me present the proclamations. Let me start with the two ladies. Um, 
Kim Zadigan, who's a Woodbridge High School art teacher, uh, one of my favorite teachers. I've seen her in action uh, working with the kids. I've seen her in the high school. She's incredibly talented, incredibly passionate about it. She's a wonderful teacher. Uh, so for the last three years, she has been overseeing this project. The first year, she had a fellow teacher from John F. Kennedy. But for the last two years, she's had a friend of hers from outside Woodbridge, which is unfortunate, but maybe we can work on that. Uh, Amanda has a Kariaku. That's got it? I got it? What was your maiden name? Peterson. Peterson. So you're telling me on purpose you went from Amanda Peterson to Amanda Hatsakariaku. All right. It must be love. It must be love. Would you two please come up? Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. You're the best. First of all, you start with your very own mayor's proclamation. Oh, and you can you. you can put them maybe down a minute and we'll all help uh, there's a lot of these and there's not that many kids here so we'll go a little quick as soon as I call your name come on up all right Jennifer Murdala Aaron Murdala Amy Renoso Megan Renoso oh, you got Gwend stuff? Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn Murdala no Murdala's here Megan Renoso Melissa Feuerstein Summer Feuerstein and Matthew Feuerstein Judy James Bryce is James, Dallas James, no Jameses, Taris Casaligi, somebody's here. Oh. You're not a kid. Well, I am, I help paint too. All right, that's okay, that's okay. They gave me one. And you're with, uh, you're with Blaming on Richie, the band, aren't you? I am. That a girl, all right. I know my bands, they play our concerts here. Wait, stay up here. Luke, Casa, how do you say that? Casaligi. Casaligi, where's Luke? Come on, dude. What's your maiden name? Al Macy. Al Macy. There you go, Luke. Nice shirt, man. Holly Casaligi. Ligi. Do you guys want to say anything? No? Did you enjoy it? Yes. Will you do it again? Yes. Okay. We're running out of mural walls. We've got to find another wall. I think we're going to, actually, the truth is, I think we're going to do next year, we did under the, um, Fulton Street underpass, the one side the Girl Scouts did did a beautiful job, the other side, I'm sad to say, as a male and as a former Boy Scout, the Boy Scouts did an awful job. And we painted over it white, we painted it white. Uh, we were going to get something done this summer, but the teacher that was going to do it uh, just couldn't. So next year we're going to do that. And I would venture to say we'll do something with the, um, the walls of the train tracks over here. There's a whole lot of wall space that we'll probably do something on. Kim Jenkins, Ethan Jenkins. Job, dude. Want to say anything? No. No. Elizabeth Powers. All right. You can say something. You're an older kid. You can say something. Tell me what. Tell me what you think about the project. It was a pleasure doing it. Did you just do this year, or did you do prior years? Uh, this year. Okay. What did you paint specifically? Uh, I painted in the green area by the, uh, by the, gorillas. the gorillas. By the gorillas? I think the gorillas are cool, aren't they? I love the zebra, though. The zebra is my favorite. Catherine Powers. What would you like to say, Catherine? Nothing. <laughs> Michael Powers? Oh, you! Oh, you moved from the front seat. Ah, oh, you moved from the front. All right, dude, you got to say something. Get over here. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. <laughs> Tatiana Malinowski. Anthony Malinowski. Erin Bennett. Daisy Amaya. Gabri oh, Daisy's here. Thank you. Want to say something? My mom is Erin Bennett. Oh, your mom is Erin Bennett. You want to take her proclamation home? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you can do that. You want to say anything to the audience? There you go. How much fun you had? I had a lot of fun. Why? What'd you do? What'd you, what'd you paint specially? Uh, I painted a lot of things. I was there a lot. Uh-huh. So I painted a lot of things. I helped paint the tree. I helped paint a lot of grass. Like a, a lot, lot of grass? Of grass. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, stay up here. We're going to take a big picture. Gabriella Montalvo, did I say this? My cousin. That's your cousin? You want to take hers? Lily Amaya, is that your cousin? Oh, you're here, okay. Okay. Want to say anything, Lily? I thought that was a lot of fun. I really felt like it brought us all together. Uh-huh, and do you like art? Do you like, did it, did it help you appreciate art more? Um, I, 
Art's already in my life. Art's already in your life? Why? Yeah. How? Um, it's just something very stress relieving. Oh, uh, you have stress? How could you have stress? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She's an overachiever. Overachiever, okay. So to you, you find art is relaxing? Yeah. All right, very good. Ryan Montalvo? Cousin. That's cousin. Kirtina Krishna, Alyssa Androvich, Teresa Androvich, Olivia Sustaval, Jimmy Bellhower's here. That's you. <laughs> oh, Tyler, oh, Todd's little Jimmy. Tyler Bellhower. What's up, pal? Give me some of that. Whoops. Want to say anything? No, thank you. No, thank you. Jimmy Bellhower. Oh, we said that already. Logan Minkler. I'll take care of How you doing, pal? Good job. Want to say anything? No. Aaron Spiller. Aaron Spiller. You want to say something, young lady? Thank you. No, you sure? <laughs> Connor Spiller, Bubba Man. You want to say anything? Come on, shake like a man. Put your hand out and shake like a man. That's better. You don't want to say anything? No. What did you paint? A gorilla. A gorilla? You painted the gorilla? Cool. Elizabeth Spiller. <laughs> what did you paint? The gorilla. The gorilla? What else? The gorilla. I said that already. <laughs> what else besides a gorilla? Nothing. Nothing? No. You're just a gorilla painter, that's it? Yeah. So what if we have a mural next year and there's no gorillas? You I don't get... know if I can do anything then. <laughs> We're okay. going to have to add the gorilla into it. Whatever. What if we do an ocean scene? What if we do a farm again? Well, we what can... if we do a planet, like a planet, all the planets? How are you going to put a gorilla on planets? We can put a gorilla in an outer space suit. A gorilla in outer space suit? Okay. <laughs> okay. You might just do that. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> Alexis Brock. Now, you can tell me a little bit about what happened here. What's going on? Tell us. Grass, just grass? All right. There was a lot of grass. Juliana Brock. Doesn't want to come up? Hold that for your sister. Riley Canis. Claire Canis. Isabella Silva. Claire's here? Oh, Claire and Riley, you're here. You don't want to come up, huh? You afraid? Isabella Silva, Alexis Gonzalez, Madison Shear, Katie Lopes, Allison Maniscalci, Nyana Mansacani, Kylie B. Oh, that's you? Okay. Naya? Anything you want to say to the audience? Um, it was a lot of fun, and I hope to paint another mural. Oh, great. We'll stay up here. Kylie Big, John Rivera Jr., Bobby Cottrell, Leanne Higgins, Abby Higgins, Daniel Perez, Sophia Perez, Layla Perez, Gracie Grabiel, Madeline Madeline Grabiel, Sean Grabiel, Graciela Goico. Do you want a proclamation? Do you want a certificate here? Do you want one? Do you want okay, you can have one. We'll take that back. So, come here, you got to say a few words. <laughs> Salma Ghazi, Yusef Ghazi, Yasmin Ghazi, Gracie Iacovelli, Alexandria Wyman, Anthony Wyman. Oh, they're here. Okay, you're Alexandria, and you're Anthony. Come on over, guys. Tell me, tell me what you painted. Oh. What'd you paint? We painted some grass and bushes. Grass and bushes. How about you? What did you paint? Grass and bushes, too. Yeah? What's your favorite animal in the whole mural? Mine would be the giraffe. Why? Mine, too. Yours, too? Why? Because um, they're, they're just cute. They're cute? Yeah, they're cute. Kind of like Cory? You know, the giraffes didn't get their spots painted for a long time. I kept driving by. The giraffes were up, but their bellies weren't painted for a long time. I don't know what's all about that. What that's all about? Yeah, you know, we were trying to get all of the high spots first. Oh, the high spots first. Okay. All right, guys. Faith Ramos. Go. Oh, you're here. I remember seeing you out there. Good. Say a few words. Um, it was fun. Okay. See. It's not her fault. She got a marriage certificate. She's all excited. Anything you want to say? 
I can't wait to paint more next year. Did you do, what did you do uh, as far as the painting? I did a little bit of everything. Uh huh. Okay, hang on. We'll get your picture. Deanna Shinsky, Damian Barnes, Nico Mancuso. Oh, Nico Barnes. Damian, that's for you. Are you Nico? Nico? All right, come on, guys. Come here. Want to say anything? What'd you paint? Uh, this year or last year? Well, what'd you paint this year? The Panda Mountain, now that's cool. What did you paint last year? The farm and the, I, I painted the farm and the water. Okay, what you paint this year? Panda. The Panda, and what you paint last year? He didn't. He didn't. I don't think he'd remember anyway, because he's kind of young. All right, well, thanks very much. Michaela, is that your sister? Oh, that's you? No. Oh, that's her. Okay, well, here, I'll just bring it to you. All right. Brennan Tados. I think we got every kid here except uh, Joseph Pecora, Nicholas Pecora, Le Leah Morello, Brody Ludwig, Noah Gibb, Evan Gibb, Harper Gibb, Alexandra Sager, Madison Sager, Kayla Smith, Kylie Smith, Jen Smith, Vanessa Gama, Lorena Gama, Vidi Desai, Shuchi Desai, Allison DeVitt, Shannon Weiss, Javi Vasquez, Mackenzie Wendell, Caitlin Robson, oh, Javi, wait, I passed him a while ago, I guess. Javi Vasquez, there you go. All right, man, talk to me. Come on, talk to me. What's going on? Tell me what you did. What did you paint? Oh, you won't talk, eh? What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal? The panda, the giraffe, the zebra? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? You're trying to get even with me, aren't you? All right, I won't make you talk. Mackenzie Wendell, Caitlin Robson, Lori Robson, Jillian Robson, Felisa Felicita Ramos, Abigail Tarabetsky, Lauren Tarabetsky. That's everybody. So what do we say about our artists? Let me ask Kim and Amanda if they'd say a few words about this project. And I can't tell you, I went there a lot. Corey, you went there a lot. We saw them in action. Um, as I said, I've seen Kim and Woodbridge High in action. Just the way you work with the kids was tremendous. You heard one girl say art is a stress relief for her. I mean, we all know that's, you know, that's actually true. Talk about the project and, and how it went. Sure. So my name is Kim. And I'm Amanda. <laughs> and uh, I feel like I, I work very well with Amanda. Um, yeah, we, we learned a lot. So last year was like the small animal project doing yes. the farm, you know, the cows. So everything's life size, if, uh, you know, in case you, you didn't see it all up close. Uh, so that was an interesting challenge then this year. Um, yeah, we kind of, um, we worked really well together and kind of, problem solving and figuring out what to do and then our volunteers helped as well so if we had any questions we of course went to our volunteers for some answers um, and we couldn't have done it without them we ended up with uh, about I think 98 or 97 volunteers in total which is amazing I think our first year when we did the ocean scene uh, we had maybe I don't know not even a third of that so um, it, it really does show that the Avenel community um, can come together and do this kind of amazing project and liven up the town a little bit and um, I mean just you guys coming out on a uh, what is today Tuesday Tuesday night um, is pretty amazing a school night and I know we have a couple open houses so it's, it's nice to see everybody here um, who could make it so thank you for that What's cool is I think, you know, the kids will forever, even when they're adults, mm -hmm. be able to drive by and say, I painted that, you know? Yeah. That's what I think is really cool. Yeah. Tell me, I didn't mention it, but not only did they paint the mural, they designed the mural. Mm -hmm. All three. So they drew them, got it approved through us, you know, we looked at it and we love what they do. And then they organized the painting, they got the supplies, they worked with the town to get the traffic stopped or, or redirected. It's a pretty significant project. It's not just let's all go paint, you know. It's got to be designed, it's got to be drawn so the kids know, stay within the lines, and then you had to supervise the painting, and of course you did some of the tough spots yourself. So I think it's wonderful. It's just a tremendous project. So thank you for that, and we will find something to keep you busy next year, guaranteed. Uh, thanks. All right, guys, let's all take a picture. Pledge of Allegiance and also a moment of silence. Remember all the people, victims, 
from the several hurricanes that have been happening, especially now with the one hitting Puerto Rico and also the earthquake that happened in Mexico today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice the requirements of the open public meeting law have been satisfied concerning this meeting. The Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger published a notice in December on the 16th, 2016. A copy of the schedule is posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board. It should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. Councilman Anderson. Here. Councilman Ficarra. Here. Councilwoman Drum. Here. Councilwoman De Jesus. Here. Councilman Spiller. Here. Councilman Small. Here. Councilman Patel. Here. Vice President Meehan. Here. And President Delina. Here. I get a motion that the minutes be approved from the fiscal year 2018 municipal budget hearing. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Beginning with the second reading ordinances tonight, Council, if I can get a motion by consent to abandon letters A, B, and C. So a motion to abandon. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from Council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. A, B, and C are abandoned. Beginning with letters D and continuing through M are first reading ordinances. Can I get a motion that these ordinances by consent be continued at the, I'm sorry, be passed on first reading, published in the Home News Tribune on December 20. Second, 2017, with notice of public hearing to be held on October 10th, 2017, at 7 p.m. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Councilman Council Vicaro. Sorry, I was getting more here. On the first readings, um, did you go all the way down again? Yes, sir. Okay, so I, I need to abstain on the last four days. Okay, down down, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments? That's okay. I'm a little quick. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Under resolutions by consent, you have listed before you numbers 1 through 25. 1 through 25. Can I get a motion that they be approved by consent? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? I believe. Can we put one vote on it first? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Councilwoman De Jesus. Um, I want to make a comment regarding resolution number two, appointing Jenny Perez Rosado to serve as a member of the Woodbridge Township Housing Authority for a five-year term. I want to say that I've known Jenny for a couple of years through her work with Davis Touch Foundation, a foundation which she founded in honor of her son. She is no stranger to public service as she works tires tirelessly with her foundation to help those in need. I look forward to working with Jenny. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing your new ideas as you join us in the Housing Authority. Welcome aboard. And she happens to Councilman Vicarra. Thank you. Uh, you know, Jenny, I've, I've been around for a while and have had the opportunity to speak to a lot of people that were going to be appointed to the Housing Authority. And um, all I know is, is that I felt like I was being interviewed. You were so in-depth with your conversation and the questions that you asked. It was very refreshing. Um, I know that your, your dedication is, is there, and we really, really appreciate you being on. And it's so nice to have your family here. Council President, maybe we can have the family stand up. I understand stand up, please. your abuelo from Puerto Rico is here. <laughs> Mom and dad. This is commitment, commitment to the community, and thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, this time of the meeting, we will now go to the public session of tonight's meeting. I would ask any resident wishing to speak, go to the microphone. Please provide your name and the section of the township in which you reside. The public session allows for five minutes. The five minutes for the time frame includes remarks by the speaker and any response or interaction by the council or administration. While this is a strict five-minute frame, the speaker will be allowed to complete a sentence if runs out of time during mid-sentence. Otherwise, there will be no extensions or allotment for additional time. Uh, good evening, Council President uh, Gerard Trabaca, Hope Lawn. Uh, I'd like to buy a vowel or whatever. I mean, that's pretty complicated over there. You know, you got all those uh, tick, rules and regulations. Tick, 
Tick, tick, tick, tick, tick up here. Tick, tick, tick. I know that. Okay. Okay. Uh, number one, where's Arizona Way going to be built in the township? You had it from last uh, council meeting session over here. It was number 15. Resolution accepting your private road construction in the township of Woodbridge. Arizona Way. That was built for King George Road and Fords. Oh, King George Road and Fords. Okay. Over there. We'll find it on there. Oh, oh Arizona T. There you go. Oh, duh. Okay. Uh, number one, um, the Parker Press Park over there, those concerts, that's a pretty good secret. Shh. Don't tell anybody about that, but it's pretty good over there. Uh, is there any way extending the uh, thing to like 1 o'clock, like the, uh, uh, the food and stuff like that next summer? Like you have it from like 1 to 5 or 1 to 7, and then, you know, like have like a, 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 a food court and stuff like that for the people? You might, you might want to look into that. You look into it. Look into it, okay. Uh, number two. Uh, how about spending some money for the library? Some of that pilot money, Mr. Mayor. You want to spend some of that pilot money by the library, the main library? Huh? Over there? You listening? Who? Oh, got your attention? Uh, they got these nice, you're putting the ramp up over there, right? And I emailed Council uh, uh, Drum over there about the uh, lighted handrails, and it's a really nice effect they'll be. And uh, the bids went out for that yet or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, and you're going to have handrails on it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Look into it. They're nice LED ones and stuff like that. And Council Drum has the information there. Uh, okay, number three. Uh, who's going to be checking up on those kids that are going into the Avenel Village over there, the uh, the Arts Village for going, kids going into school and stuff like that? Who's going to be checking up on them? Why have to be checked on? Well, since it's a pilot program, and uh, they're not paying any school taxes, right? And you know, Mr. Landolfi said they're not paying any school taxes if over there. If someone's going to school, they're paying taxes. How? They pay taxes to the pilot program. <clears throat> the taxes yeah. are paid through the pilot program. There's so taxes being paid. they're not paying paid. it for the student. Right, we went through this before. It's apples and oranges, but let's see if the kids well, come in there. Well, it's not apples and oranges because you're trying to make it seem that taxes aren't being paid. Taxes come out of the pilot program. As you know, it's a 30-year program where taxes are being taken out. But they're not paying for the student, are they? When the school board comes to us and asks us for help paying for the students, we'll deal with it. All right, we'll figure this out because nobody knows what's going on yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Okay. Uh, how many people died this year with the uh, opioid uh, crisis that's in the town? I mean, Woodbridge is number 12, I read, <laughs> in the state, right? And uh, we know the number was about 24, 26, or what? Yeah, we don't disclose vital statistics. Oh, okay. Maybe the coroner does. Okay, the, let's see now, the Delina Manor over there, parking problem. I mean, what can I say? I've been bringing this up, backup alarms. It's not even like open that. yet, Mr. Chewbacca. So oh, whoa, whoa, stop whoa, bringing whoa. up there's a parking problem. when there's, It's not even open yet, so. Where are they going to park? I mean, you got the people. There's a parking the, lot there, and there's street parking along the building. They advertise 58 spaces over there, Council President, and there's okay. only 20. Eight and nine spaces over there, and then you can have the staff, you can have the people coming in, you can have the visitors. I mean, you know, I've been bringing this up for how long? And, and you keep getting the same answer. Yeah, nothing, none huh? on there. Okay, and what's your, uh, and uh, it was despicable of you how you showed your true colors against Mr. Nagy here at the last meeting. Um, he's a senior, he's got 15 years on me plus in the township, and the way you treated him is abhorrent and despicable. Uh, you cater to the millennials, right, Mr. Mayor? Hello? Mr. Chewbacca? Hello? Mr. Chewbacca, you're talking through the chair. Okay, can you ask the no, mayor if he... No, we don't cater to anybody. Come on, the mayor said it, but to the okay, Boy we, Scouts we, were right here. I was standing right here, Council President. All right, another no answer right here. <clears throat> uh, no cameras yet or anything like that uh, for the police department, right? And you guys That's don't want to run? No? You're sending the cops into schools and the, be there for uh, uh, security? And the cops in the schools don't have any body cams, right? That's correct. And they still change the reports in the town, and you're sending the cops in the that, schools. That's, that's your opinion. Opinion. It's right here, Council uh, President. I'd like to read this. Woodbridge cops accused of crash cover-up admitted to PTI. New Brunswick. This is from the Home News Tribune. Two Woodbridge police officers accused of giving false information in the investigation of a 2015 car crash involving another township police officer mm -hmm have lost their jobs and, and have been enrolled in a PTI for the offenders. To be and continued. Thank you, Mr. Jabaka. Your okay. time is up. Uh, two and a half minutes for rebuttal we should have. All right. 
Council President? Yes, Councilman Spiller. Uh, Mr. Jabaka pretends to like to use big words. What I think is important is he's going to sit here and go rah rah over the ongoing opiate abuse problem. We obviously are aware that there's an issue. We're taking steps. Councilwoman Meehan and the administration uh, are working vigorously. How's that for a big word? So I think that's just kind of uh, disrespectful. Thank you. Absolutely. Hi, my name is Maureen MacArthur. I'm a Colonia resident. I'm, I'm here actually to talk about something important. Um, I'm here to, to thank the council and to thank the mayor. I have a 21-year-old autistic son who finished school in May or June, and now he's attending the extended after 21 program that the town put together. And it's run by our house. It's going to be housed in Port Reading, as you know, in, a, um, in an old Hess building that's being renovated right now. And temporarily, he's being housed at the, v the American Legion in Islin. He's been at that school for seven days. It opened on September 11th. I brought his communication book, if anybody would like to see it. I could read it, and every day, I'll show it to you. Every day it says the same thing. It says, John had a great day at school. Um, they're in the process of looking for part-time jobs for them. And in the meantime, they're keeping them bu busy with reading, yoga. They've gone on um, some trips to play soccer. They go to the community center. They've all became members. And this is only, um, this is the seventh day of school. So it, people ask me how it came about. And I tell them it was a gift from God. Just kind of fell in my lap. So uh, again, thank you very much. And um, it just was um, a wonderful thing. Th thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Susan Fox. I live in the Colonia section. Uh, I walk a two-mile route around my neighborhood almost every day, and uh, I'm kind of tired of like listening to my neighbors complain about their high taxes. So I wanted to reflect on things that I'm getting from my taxes. Mm -hmm. So I have two grandchildren in public school one of which is, uh, has a speech problem and is getting help. And uh, my granddaughter just started Colonia Middle School and she loves going to Evergreen Center after school. So that's one thing. Um, I wanna say that I call property maintenance almost every other week uh, from April to November and they respond very promptly to my complaints of uh, properties not being taken care of in my neighborhood because for the amount of property taxes that I'm paying, I am not going to tolerate other people not taking care of their properties. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to say that um, I had complained to the mayor several times about the condition of Chena Hills Road. I am really happy that it has finally been repaved. It will probably add five years to the life of my car. And I'm really happy also with the rumble strips that have been put down on um, New Dover Road. You know, I am personally aware of a death that occurred at that curve um, uh, years ago by Woods Lane. And I do think that the rumble strips will at the very least uh, prevent accidents and at very best may save some lives. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> my name is Frank Trombator from Ward 1, District 10. I have several questions that should be directed toward the police, but I'm going to ask you to ask them. These are not adversarial in any way, shape, or form. I'm strictly on a fact-finding mission. We have approximately 100,000 people in this township, am I correct? Yes. 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 How many police do we have active on the force? That's the information I couldn't ask. 198. 198. 198. So basically we got 60 or 70 guys out on a shift, right? Am I correct? Three shifts rotating? There are several different squads. So I'm trying to get to something. What I'm trying to get to is do we have any protection against an EMP incident? I'm not familiar with what you're speaking of. Beg your pardon? I'm not familiar with what you're speaking about. 
is our communication system for law enforcement and fire and our vehicles, do they have any protection against an electromagnetic pulse? Okay, now, can you, or is it something you, you know, we have to get back to the monster? Uh, I, I don't the know. The fire department has said no. Because no. Yeah, yeah. no. no. Council President, as, as a rule, you don't discuss what measures you have in place um, as security against those types of incidents. It just, you know, it's like giving the keys to the, um, you know, to the chambers. You don't do it. Um, so, so do I think we have proper measures? Have, yes. We will not discuss. So basically, in the event of a major solar flare, and the police department may or may not go out of business, we're not to know this. I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? Uh, my name is Mukesh. Uh, I've been living in New Zealand more than 26 years. And uh, let me tell you what I uh, experienced in 26 years. Uh, I've been to a lot of uh, other town. I have never seen the mayor. 100% uh, people, they know the mayor and the council. So I congratulate all the council. And our mayor is so friendly with the community. I raised my both the kids in, uh, from kindergarten to the 12th. Now both they are serving the country today. And uh, I am very pleased and I have, I'm so honored to be a part of Island. Uh, let me tell you three things I came uh, in my mind today and come here to express. Uh, the new Cheno Hill Road. I used to own the store on St. George's Avenue. We used to go every single day through that road. Now that road has come out so beautifully. So I congratulate to put that new road on Cheno Hill. Second thing, all the curb. I have not seen the curb in the other town. The curb and the intersection is so well done. And I command that thing to the other town. They should follow your path also. The third thing, the school, uh, my, both the kids, they studied in 24. I heard that they are renovating that school. So I'm so honored to see those uh, school is going to come out with a new shape and people would uh, take advantage of it. One more question and uh, not a complaint, but we live on uh, Middlesex Essex Turnpike. Every single day, every year, been increasing the traffic there, particularly rush hour in the morning and the evening. And those who are living there, uh, it's very hard to get out. Uh, the town people, they are so friendly, but the outsider, they come from uh, other town and using that facility, they are, not, they are not a courteous people. And they block and give you example from my home, if my wife is going to the job, it, they block all the driveway. It's like 10 minutes to get out from there. So if you can do something. Also, the police department to and I, for you. And I congratulate mayor and the entire council to do a good job to the citizen of Islin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? There are no other comments. Can I get a motion that this portion be closed? Motion. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Okay, at this time we will go to the agenda portion of the meeting. Uh, I just have one thing, and that's to do with the uh, Fort's business community. They are having their trick or treat with the Fort's business community. Take the Scarecrow, Scarecrow Challenge for a fun and safe evening of trick or treat. Look for the Scarecrows up and down New Brunswick Avenue in Ford's at participating businesses. And that will be on Thursday, October 31st from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. rain or shine. So um, if you're in the area, and you got your children, please bring them down to New Brunswick Avenue for the uh, Scarecrow Challenge. And once again, that will be all the businesses participating. Uh, you walk up and down and look for the Scarecrows uh, at the participating businesses. And that will be from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., rain or shine. And that will be October 31st on a Tuesday. And that's all I have. And I'll go to Council Vice President Meehan. 
Thank you. I'm going to go down to uh, number 13, the Heroin Task Force, which I'm extremely passionate about, as there are many, many people in this township that are. So I want to tell you a little bit about what we are doing. Um, the peer recovery program is now expanding to St. Peter's Hospital, who will be coming on board with us on September 25th. That makes five area hospitals that the township is working with to combat this problem. The township is also ready to begin a program called WARM, Woodbridge Addiction Recovery Program. This is a program where local businesses will hire people that are in, rec in recovery from our program, and then we will monitor, monitor them to make sure they stay off of drugs. We also offer a parent support group that meets every second and fourth Tuesday of the month from seven to eight o'clock at the health center. This group is open to all parents who have lost a child to substance use disorder, those who have a child in recovery, or parents who have a child currently facing addiction. Also, for individuals who are currently recovering, we have a program at the Sycamore Senior Center in Port Reading that serves as a substance-free relaxation center on Wednesday nights, and now they also meet on Sundays to watch football in an alcohol-free setting in addition to their Wednesday evenings. For more information, or if you know somebody that has a problem with drugs, you can reach out to our addiction service coordinator, Bonnie Nolan, and you can reach her at 732-855-0600, extension 5008. Our township is, is so passionate about helping these people on drugs, so I take offense to what you said. Um, I'm gonna go back down to um, my number 16, AEDs. 28 Woodbridge Township employees who work in the Township facilities where automated external defibrillators, AEDs, are located or will be located shortly. We're given CPR AED training this morning at the Community Center by a group called Team Life. The Township has received 36 units so far, 20, 23 which are designated to be put in Township facilities. So far in total, 57 Township employees have been trained on these units as well as 28 Woodbridge Township youth recreational coaches. I can't stress how important it is to have these units in these facilities and to train our employees in case of an emergency. And I want to thank Vito and John Cook. They've been so instrument, instrumental to uh, getting these units into place. And um, I just have a couple upcoming announcements. This Saturday, we will be having our Central Jersey Beer Fest, sponsored by JJ Biddings at Parker Press in Woodbridge, along, along with New Jersey's finest handcrafted beers. There will be live music and food. The price for a drinking adult is $30, 15 for a non-drinking adult. This year, the charity will go to help a teenager from Colonia who's suffering multiple health problems. On October 15, we're really excited. We're going to be hosting our first breast cancer walk in Colonia down in Mann Avenue. We'll be leaving School 21 down in Mann Avenue to the Colonia Fire Department, where we'll be hosting a spaghetti dinner from 1 to 6 for a local resident, Laura Grunley, from Colonia, who's battling breast cancer. We invite you to walk with us and then stop for spaghetti afterwards. If you would like to donate a basket or you need tickets, you can reach me at 732. 382-0273. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Recreation Department is uh, once again holding their Frank Agnan Fishing Derby. That'll be on October 7th from 9 to 11. This is a fun family event. Uh, they give prizes to um, the, the families that catch the bigger fish, right, Councilman Anderson? Didn't you win a prize one year at the Fishing Derby? I did. You did. Yeah. Oh, you, did. you did or the kids? <laughs> <laughs> so it's really fun. It's from 9 to 11 on October 7th, and it's um, at the Woodbridge Pond, and that's on South Park Drive in Woodbridge proper. So hope you can all come out and have fun. Usually rains, but everyone has fun anyway. <laughs> Uh, Rebuilding Warriors fundraiser event, uh, Woodstock and Woodbridge, will take place on Sunday, September 24th from 1 to 8. It's in the area across from Moby's in Seaworn, and it's the second year Moby's is hosting this event for veterans with PTSD in an effort to provide them with service dogs to help them with their PTSD. Please come out and support them. There will be five bands playing throughout the event. Food and beverages will be available. 
The Chamber of Commerce is hosting our Mayor's Breakfast on Friday, September 29th at the Colonia Country Club, and the topic is Sustainability, New Jersey. Speakers include Sustainability Jersey Executive Director Randy Solomon and Nancy Quirk, Energy Program Manager, Gary Sondermeyer, the Vice President of Operations at Bayshore Recycling, and Amory Paraccio, our very own Chief of Staff Carolyn Ehrlich, will moderate this event. The Woodbridge Township Health Department is partner partnering to support a Conceive Conference, which is the first one in the tri-state area. It's, it'll be on October 7th from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the APA Hotel. It will be a fun and informative event for women and men who are trying to conceive and those going through or thinking about starting fertility treatment. Registration is $25 each or $40 per couple. However, there is a voucher available that will allow you to register for free up until Friday, September 22nd. Breakfast and lunch are included in the registration. Space is limited. Leading experts including OBGYNs, endocrinologists, scientists, attorneys, nurses, dietitians, and more will present on a wide array of subjects including how to prepare for having a baby, how to survive the journey, how to cope with pregnancy loss, and trying to conceive through LGBTQ, and trying to conceive over the age of 35, nutrition, diet, and fertility, and much more. A full list of sessions um, are available for you. You can go to the website at www.conceiveconference.com. And there is a YouTube video out there called Never Give Up 2017 Conceive Conference. So if anyone's interested, please seek those resources and, and register and get your tickets. One more announcement is the Woodbridge Elks is hosting a free soccer shoot at the Woodbridge High School on Friday night from 6 to 8.30 for, for ages 6 to 13. And this coming Sunday, the 24th, is a breakfast to support the Elks Youth Activities Committee that bring free youth programs such as the soccer shoot and the hoop shoot to the youths in our community. So please consider going. Breakfast is served from 8 to 11. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you. Council Anderson. Thank you, Council President. I'm going to hold on item number one. Uh, two uh, is the job bank, and I would like to um, ask all people that are unemployed right now and are looking and are Woodbridge residents to visit our township website, go into the local opportunity center, uh, the employment opportunity center. Right now, for substitute teachers, uh, Insight is uh, our partner for substitute teachers. So if you are looking to get into the teaching or if you're uh, you have uh, the opportunity to be a substitute, please uh, check the uh, site out so that you can go on to the link uh, to become a substitute teacher. Uh, Woodbury Center is looking for a maintenance mechanic. Uh, BASF has many positions uh, available in our Island location and uh, there are other locations. FedEx as well. Uh, the WIC company is looking for maintenance positions. Uh, Lightbridge Academy is hiring teaching assistants and in the Island location. Uh, Chick-fil-A also has many positions uh, from the front counter to the back kitchen food prep. Those positions are available there. So please check that uh, Employment Opportunity Center if you are out of work. I know what it's like to uh, have to come home and, and uh, pay the bills and, and, and feed the kids. So, you know, this is a, a great resource and um, there are a lot of uh, resume building tips on here. So please check this website out. It's a great resource for you. I'm going to hold on item number three, item number four, and number five. I would like to mention that the Hall of Fame um, dinner is coming up very quickly, uh, Sunday, October 8th at uh, 6 p.m. at the Woodbridge Community Center. Uh, there are tickets still available. It's a fantastic event, and this is where we honor the uh, heroes uh, from our high schools of uh, 20 years and prior. Uh, so they would have had to graduate 20 years ago or earlier and uh, excelled in any sports in the high school system or after they went uh, beyond high school. Um, if you would like, we are also accepting nominations for 2018 as well. And you can contact the rec department for the tickets. And you can also contact the rec department regarding the application. Um, Taste of Woodbridge is coming up October 19th. Um, 6.30 to 9.30, 600 Main Street at our community center. Uh, the tickets are $30 in advance and $35 at the door. Um, contact Martina at 732-596-4108. It's a fantastic event. If you haven't been there, 
usually it's in the skating uh, rink and we have restaurants from all over Woodbridge from every corner of Woodbridge that come in and participate and it's a just a great day um, everybody loves the bang bang shrimp from uh, uh, yeah bonefish grill and um, they're always looking for something from uh, goodfellas over there in Fords and there's there's great food there and uh, uh, also uh, it's just a great environment and a great community day so please uh, consider that event and then finally I would like to mention that we have the trunk or treat coming up on October 22nd for all of our kids to come out to the community center in a very safe environment where they can go and show off their costumes for Halloween and it will be followed by a movie um, so we'll have a drive-in movie environment all of us that grew up around here knew the Plainfield Edison uh, movie theater very well um, our kids get to experience that and they're going to show Hotel Transylvania I'd like to thank our our rec director, Mr. Simaluka, um, for putting all of this together. And um, that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman DeCarra. Thank you, Council President. Just uh, by way of information, uh, Councilwoman Drum mentioned the fishing derby after Frank Gagnon. Frank is the uh, late uh, president of the Housing Authority and oh, was an outdoorsman. Okay. So a little bit of history lesson there. Um, on my agenda, item number one, Woodbridge Community Center. The community center continues to offer uh, family activities with roller skating, ice skating. The mini golf course is still available in the back along with the batting cages. And because they're in the back of the, uh, of the facility, we don't always get to see them, but it's a wonderful place. Preschool, uh, preschool registration is still going on at Highland Grove, but spots are limited. So if you're a parent and you're considering preschool for your child, now's the time to get over there. And finally, in our swimming pool, the Sea Wolves, which is our swim team, has their tryouts every Tuesday, 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, moving along to senior recreation, congratulations goes out to all those people involved with the New Jersey Senior Olympics, 11 consecutive years in New Jersey, and the, uh, the participants did a wonderful job, but special thanks also goes out to uh, all of our volunteers. There were many high school students uh, representatives certainly from our police department, our emergency management, the CERT folks, the mayor's advisory committee, and then again just tons and tons of volunteers. And then just finally moving down to um, my item number five, uh, the mayor's wellness campaign, Mayor McCormick's wellness campaign has the big uh, tour to Woodbridge which is a 30 or a 15 mile bike tour that's this Sunday. So if you go out and bike 30 or 15 miles then you can go to the concert across the street from uh, Moby Dix there. Registration starts at 7 a.m. and it's over at the club at Woodbridge is where we begin and end and at the end there's a nice breakfast that's sponsored by Wegmans and again I want to uh, reiterate that this is a tour not a race. It's a lot of fun. We have families participating. Uh, you can go on to the township website uh, or you can go to raceroster.com and you can register online. Joe, I mentioned to you I was going to put this poster up. I don't suspect you can see it, but there's posters like this all over town uh, and it refers to this and it's just a nice way to spend a Sunday. You don't have to be a biking expert. And then again, you can go participate in the other events around town. Council President, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Davis. Thank you, Council President. Moving down to item number six, police community relations. On September 23rd, Third, Detective Slosberg and Cena will be participating in a free car seat check at Toys R Us on Route 1 in Islin with the Sheriff's Department from 10 o'clock in the morning to 1 p.m. This event is open to the public. There will also be officers giving lessons on fingerprinting and bike safety at the annual Boy Scout Campery. On September 25th, they will be talking to a class at JFK High School about a career in law enforcement. And on September 30th, they will be attending the Avenel Colonia Health Fair at the First Aid Squad. Moving down to item number nine, Hispanic Heritage Festival. This year we'll be celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month on Sunday, October 1st from 12 to 4 at Parker Press here in Woodbridge. So please come out and enjoy live music, food, and other entertainment. Este año estaremos celebrando el mes de la herencia hispana el domingo, octubre primero, de 12 a 4 de la tarde, en el parque Parker Press, aquí en Woodbridge. Por favor, vengan y disfruten de la música, la comida y otro entretenimiento. Item number 10, the Varan Art Center. The Varan Art Center's Poetry and Literary Festival is this Saturday, September 23rd, at Woodbridge Middle School from 11 to 4 p.m. 
The Artist of the Year exhibit, Enrique Saldivar, will be on view from October 5th through October 26th at the Barron Art Center. The artist reception will be on October 10th from 7 to 9. Feel free to call 732-634-0413 with any questions. And item number 11, the Free Public Library of Woodbridge. Township residents are invited to visit the library for a free consultation to digitize photo collections, slides, 16 millimeter film, VHS tapes, and more on Saturday, October 7th from 11 to 1 p.m. 20% of the proceeds for digitization will be donated to the Woodbridge Public Library Foundation. Visit the library website for more information at www.woodbridgelibrary.org or call 732-634 4450 and speak with Patty Anderson at extension 7242. Thank you, that is all. Yes. Thank you, Council President. I have number two on my agenda. I'd just like to acknowledge and congratulate um, all the children that volunteered on the, over, on the Avenue Street mural over the summer. Uh, we had them in uh, before uh, Council tonight um, and received their uh, mayor's and council citations. Um, I think we had over almost 30 kids, uh, over 100 uh, volunteered over the, over the summer. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think every kid, almost 25 of the 30 kids painted the same piece of grass on the mural when they <laughs> were asked. Painted the gorilla. Um, <laughs> the gorilla. So, um, you know, it's always nice to give out proclamations and citations, especially citations to the children, but to see the reaction when they get their name called, they're jumping up and down, jumping through the chairs. So I just wanted to acknowledge them. Uh, item number three, uh, National Public Lands Day is this, I'm sorry, is next Saturday, September 30th from 9 to 2. Uh, volunteers are needed from 9 to 11. We're encouraging uh, Woodbridge residents, businesses, and schools to participate in cleaning up and beautifying our parks, playgrounds, and public lands. And then from 11 to 2, we'll have Ernie Oros Woodbridge River Celebration. That's a free festival event. You can enjoy food and music. Uh, sign up for a walking tour. Uh, you could kayak uh, in the pond that is there. Um, again, and you can contact Rosemary at 732-596. 4047 or visit our township site at www.woolbridge.twp.nj.us. Um, I always say Oros Park is fantastic. It's one of the gems in uh, Woolbridge Township. Kayaking, fishing, uh, there's over 30 trails, 5,000 species of birds and animals. So if you get the chance, uh, check it out. Um, my, the rest of my agenda is in order. I would just like to alert the uh, residents of Avenel that there's a new crosswalk located at Avenel Street and Wolf Place. This will further assist the safety of our residents that frequent the business portion of Avenel Street. I'd like to thank the administration and the mayor on assisting with this. Uh, that is all. Thank you, Councilman Small. Mr. President, my agenda is in order tonight. Just a reminder: uh, Saturday, September 30th, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Admiral First Aid is holding their annual health fair. Uh, please come. <coughs> it's a good, uh, good day. Support the organization. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Patel. Uh, my agenda is in order. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Go to Mr. Mitch now. Thank you, Mr. President. The only item uh, 2A listed on my agenda I may be in touch with you within the next two to three weeks. We might have to schedule it here. That's all I have. Okay, we will now go to the administration. Mr. Landolfi. Uh, thank you, Council President. I have a few, uh, few items for you this evening. First is I'm going to request a change order for the Henry Enman Library Air Conditioning. Um, secondly, a state contract purchase of lighting for the uh, community center. Um, and if I could just spend a moment on that. Although that's listed as a, a purchase of lighting, really what that is an energy efficiency program. Uh, the lighting that we're buying there will be uh, energy efficient. Uh, we'll receive a $40,000 grant on the Progressive Energy Lighting Program from the state. Uh, in addition to that, we project somewhere between $40,000 and $50,000 a year in annualized savings uh, on our electric bill um, so that uh, at the end of four to five years, uh, we'll have that project pay, paid for. So it's a very quick payback for those types of, of programs. Um, so again, although we listed it as a, as a purchase, it's really an energy efficiency program. Uh, I would like to, to thank Carol Early. Carol does, as, as you know, she does all the sustainable work for us. Um, and she really spearheaded this program uh, behind the scenes. Um, next, we have a playground uh, uh, equipment installation. Uh, that's our annual bid uh, that permits us uh, to do installations as needed. We're gonna rebid the root control uh, uh, program. 
Um, and lastly, we're going to have, uh, and I mentioned this before, we talked about a lot, the, the uh, community rating system, the CRS program. We're going to have the legislation that's required uh, for us to join uh, the program. It's going to be before you um, at, at the first meeting in October. Um, uh, two folks that did a real nice job with that. I, I don't know if you had the opportunity to meet him, Tom Flynn. He's, he's a new employee, hired about a year ago. Um, the, uh, has a master's degree, does a great job, actually understands this stuff. Most of us don't. Uh, Tom's done a real nice job with it, and so is Mike Gellin. Mike is attending the RBSA uh, meeting tonight, so you're going to have to tell him I said nice things about him. Uh, but, but those two have done uh, a real nice job packaging this. It's, it's a pretty complicated and comprehensive process. Uh, again, we're, we're going to be able to rejoin that program after you act on the legislation and we get through. Uh, the federal vetting process. So we're happy that, that we're able to present that to you. Um, that's all I have, uh, Council President. Thank you. We now go to the Police Department, Director Hubbard. Thank you, Council President. We are a proposal to establish a loading zone on Fulton Street. Uh, we're putting weight restrictions on Avenel Street and Chano Hills Road. Uh, we're removing a handicap spot on Tulip uh, Drive and Fords, and we're adding handicap spots on Fifth Street and Avenel, Garfield Avenue and Colonia and Ridgely Avenue in Islin. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Health Department, Mr. Green? Mr. Green's not here, okay. Uh, go to Recreation, Mr. Simaluka. Thank you, Council President. I have one item tonight, a donation to the Woodbridge Arts Alliance. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. We will now go to Public, I mean, sorry, Planning and Development, Ms. Leskey. Thank you, Council President. Just our standard bi-weekly refund. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Public Works, Mr. Henry. Thank you, Council President. I have one bond release. And just want to remind the residents that leaf bags will be available at Public Works starting the first week of October. And I think October 2nd is when we start our handouts at different locations. I think it starts at Sycamore and Port Reading. And they can go on the website or to their calendar to see the dates and times for uh, distribution. Thank you. Thank you. Go to legal and legal. Mr. Mitchell. President, whereas Section 8 of the Public Meetings Act, Chapter 1975 permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that these circumstances presently exist, and therefore being resolved by the Municipal Council of Township of Woodbridge that the public portion of this meeting is hereby recessed in order for the Municipal Council to meet in a closed executive session for approximately 20 minutes to discuss bargaining, bargaining unit negotiations. Can I get a motion on the resolution? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have. This public portion of the meeting is now recessed. I'm going to ask everyone to please leave the room. Okay, can I get a motion to exit executive session and resume the meeting? Motion. Second. Any questions? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have. We're back in regular session. Council, before you have two resolutions this evening that came out of executive session regarding bargaining units, can I get a motion that these two resolutions be approved? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Make a motion closed. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 